I've admitted, um, this was on the 14th of May. Uh, this is part three. If you won't understand this unless you watch part two, and you won't understand that unless you watch part one. So hopefully you watch all those parts and understand what the heck I am talking about. Um, so I didn't have anything. I didn't have a change of clothes. I didn't have PJs. I hadn't, like, you know, fasted or anything like that. The night before, I hardly had dinner. In fact, I didn't have dinner because, um, I don't know why I didn't have dinner. I was probably a bit nervous about the next day. Um, and then I hardly had breakfast because we had to be at the, the hospital so early. Mum and I shared this teeny little apple danish. Um, and had I known, I would have <laughs> eaten a lot more than what I ate. Um... So this was a Thursday. She booked me in. Um, Mum rushed to the store and bought me some PJs and some undies and uh, socks and stuff like that, which was really, really nice of her to do that because I just didn't have, I didn't have anything. Um, and called Mike. Uh, he was at work and just said, don't rush over, just, you know, come off to work, but you need to bring me this list of things. Um, and they basically were saying, we're putting you on the waiting list, and when there's a slot open up for you, that's when you'll go in for the surgery. Well, one o'clock rolled by, nothing. Two o'clock, nothing. Three o'clock, nothing. I am now ravenous at this point. I could eat my arm. I was so hungry. Um, and I, we call the nurse over and we say, look, like, what is happening? Am I having the surgery today? What happens if I don't have the surgery today? When can I eat something? <laughs> um, and she said, the doctor, sorry, it was the doctor, not the nurse. And she said, um, four o'clock is usually the, the cutoff point. At that point, um, you should know more or less if you're going to have your operation today and then you can eat something. Um, if you don't have your operation today, you have to stay in the hospital and stay overnight. Sweet, it's great. Well, five thirty roll, five o'clock rolls along, and I'm just like, what is happening? Nothing. No one's told me anything. So I buzz the nurse, then I say, please let me eat something. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm obviously not going to be on the waiting list. When will I hear if I get the surgery today? And she says, well, even though the cutoff is at four, they still are operating right up till about seven or eight o'clock at night so you might not hear until then and i'm thinking you have got to be joking and i wasn't allowed to drink either so um i'm feeling starting to feel qu quite dehydrated at this point um luckily half an hour after that the doctor comes in and she says it's not happening tonight um so you can eat mum had bought me this bur this sandwich from down at one of the cafeterias um, but it, it was now so soggy because it had kind of been sitting there for, for who, who knows how long. Um, the bread was all mush and everything, but there were these like chicken fillet pieces inside. Well, I got into those chicken fillet pieces like there was no tomorrow and they brought me the hospital food and the hospital food, it's, it's hospital food, need I say any more, but it was like the most delicious thing I'd ever eaten in my life. It was just incredible. <laughs> um, and I was just so stoked to be eating. I, I didn't really care that I didn't have the surgery that day. So I had to stay the night there. Um, you never sleep well at hospital. And I had um, about three roommates in my, my room over the course of my stay there. And several of them... Two, two of them, one of them in particular, she was there for maybe 12 or 13 hours and she slept the entire time and she snored the entire time. It was quite um, incredible. So um, the next day is when I had my surgery. I had it, uh, I think at about 11, 30 or 12. Um, I was super, super nervous for that. So they gave me the, some drugs. Um, which worked in like 30 seconds the the anesthetist came in and I said look I'm really nervous you need to give me something for the anxiety please and he said okay 
you put this in my arm and he said this will take about 30 seconds to work and there was a clock on the wall and I was watching it tick down and literally when it got to about 30 seconds my whole body just went limp it was just this amazing feeling you felt like you were floating on a cloud <laughs> um and then after that I don't remember much they um I guess they put gas on um and I was out to it so yeah that was my surgery and woke up in the recovery room it took a bit to get my breathing um normal again and just uh I don't know I struggled with not having the gas at first but after that after a while it was fine um they did three incisions uh one in my belly four sorry four incisions one in my belly button one kind of just below my my little fat blob <laughs> but and then two on my right hand side um which was uh yeah they're still a little bit tender and quite pink they're not very uh straight cut lines but um i suppose they've got to do quite a bit of poking around um and yeah i had to stay another night in hospital just because of how long my surgery took and i was still feeling quite nauseous afterwards so they made me stay two nights in hospital and then I could go home the next day.